Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Naresh Mahipal, Senior Assistant Professor from Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. The subject on which I will deliver lecture is insurance law and the very first lecture is about the nature and functions of insurance. Dear friends, nobody can predict with certainty what the future will bring. Emergencies like sickness, mishappenings and even death don't knock the doors. Instead, they strike quickly and without warning. Insurance is important in this situation because it provides financial protection for you and your family in the event that any of these unfavorable things happen. And uh, to understand in a very simple language, insurance is a simple notion. You must buy insurance if you own something important for which you cannot afford to replace such as your life, such as your uh, family members life, such as uh, your business infrastructure and your other assets. In the event that it is lost or destroyed, purchasing insurance gives you the assurance that in the event of an unforeseen circumstances, the insurer provides you with the less loss and without affecting your pocketbook. So this is the importance of the insurance that why we should all carry the insurance because you know uh, this is very important that there are certain things that we cannot afford to lose in our life or we cannot calculate into the money. So in the event of the happening or mishappening of that particular event we should have some insurance so that the insurer bears that particular loss and it should be your pocket friendly. So today in topics we will be covering what is the insurance that is the meaning of the insurance with the help of certain definitions such as functional or the contractual definitions and what is the nature of insurance and what is the functionality of the insurance. Through all these three topics we will discuss it one by one. So let us come to first of all the very first topic that is the meaning of insurance. Difference it is universally accepted phenomena that what is created will be destroyed. We all anticipate countless risks in our daily life. Risk is closely connected with loss. Every risk results in loss of one or other kind. There can be loss due to perils of sea, illness, death, fire and so on. The risk cannot be eliminated but the loss can be. This is very important to understand that less risk cannot be eliminated. We cannot anticipate what kind of risk we will favor. We will, uh, in future we will anticipate. But yes, definitely the loss can be eliminated. This desire to protect a person from uncertain loss brings the business of insurance into existence. The insurance protects the insured from variety of risks he anticipates by spreading the loss to persons who agrees to cooperate each other at the time of loss by making contributions to the common fund. When anybody of them is exposed to risk, such loss is made good out of the common fund. This is called the pooling system basically in the insurance law. In fact, it is a system where the loss is shared by the contributors by the payment of premium which is calculated on the possibility of loss. In our subsequent slide, we will try to understand that who is the insurer, who is insured and what is this premium. So this is basically what I want to tell you is that insured protects the insured from various type of risks when he deposits some uh, very less amount of premium and he and the loss is suffered, uh, is distributed amongst all the contributors. Let us say, what is insurance? We can say 
that insurance is an assurance that if a particular kind of event happens, the insured person will be paid the money to sustain that particular loss. He who seeks such protection against such a risk is called the insured or assured and who undertakes to protect such person from financial loss or some mishappening is called the insurer or assurer or underwriter. Basically, these are the insurance companies. And the consideration amount which is collected by the insurance companies to provide such security is called the premium or premia. The document containing terms and conditions of a contract that is the insurance contract is called as the policy or insurance policy. So, these are certain basic terms which defines that who is insured, who is insurer, what is insurance policy and what is premium. As already discussed that it is a system where loss is shared by contributors by payment of premium which is calculated on the possibility of loss. The basic function of insurance is to shift the loss suffered by contribution of premium to common fund on the shoulders of willing, capable and consenting professional or professionals that is the insurance companies. In other words, we can say risk of financial loss to a person is assumed by another person by paying a very less amount that is called the premium amount and through this you shift the loss in the event that you is suffered in future by contributing this premium to a common fund and that burden is shifted to the shoulders of the insurance companies to bear that particular loss. Let us make it more clear with an illustration. In a town, there are 500 car owners. Each car can be valued at rupees 3 lakh. To say, every year, one car is lost due to theft. If all the 500 car owners agree to come together and each one contribute rupees 600 annually, that amount is called as your premium. And if you are coming to pool together, to contribute together, you will be called as the insured person. So, if you agree to come together and each one contributes rupees 600 annually, the common fund would be rupees 3 lakh per year. Now, this would be sufficient to pay rupees 3 lakh to the contributor, that is the policy holder, that is the insured, whose car is lost due to theft. Thus, the risk of contributor is distributed among this the 500 contributors of the town. So, what we understand through this illustration is that by paying a meager amount of rupees 600 annually, you are entitled to get the whole amount of your car if it is valued at rupees 3 lakh. This is how the insurance companies come into the business that the burden is shifted to the shoulder of other persons. So, from the above discussion, it can be established that a legal contract exists between the insured that is the person who takes the policy, the person or business that purchase the policy and the insurer, the business companies that offers the insurance under which the insurer agrees to pay the insured a predetermined sum of money in the event of an untimely death that is untimely mishappening or contingency an untimely death, an accident, damage to a car or home or your industrial establishment etc. This is what we called insurance and this is what insurance is meant for that is to bear the loss of the policy holders. So, understanding the meaning of insurance that what is insurance, let us come to some definitions of insurance, it will be more clear through some contractual or the functional definitions that what is basically the insurance. The definition of insurance can be classified in under two categories that is functional definitions and contractual definitions. 
let us come to the first about the functional definitions of insurance what is functional definition functional definitions are based on economic or business orientation since it is a device that provide financial compensation against risk or misfortune now we will discuss certain uh, definitions functional definitions with the help of certain jurists according to lnc mearson insurance is a device for the transfer of certain risks of economic loss to an insured that would otherwise be borne by the insured as per disnedel insurance is an instrument of distributing the loss of few among the many so this is what we are all already discussing about that uh, we contribute some money that is called a common fund and if we suffer some miss happening in future that loss will be uh, borne by all the policy holders basically through the insurance company and we will get our due entitlement according to encyclopedia britannica insurance may be defined as a social device whereby a large group of individuals through a system of equitable contrib contributions may reduce or eliminate measurable risk of economic loss common to all members of the group so this is very uh, vast definition that has been given by encyclopedia britannica that it may be defined as a social device whereby a large group of individuals through a system of equitable contribution may reduce or eliminate risk to all members of the group so this is very important to understand that this is how we pull through the money and we eliminate the risk of economic loss which is common to all the members of the group according to ghosh and agarwal insurance is a cooperative form of distributing a certain risk over a group of persons who are exposed to it according to thomas a provision insurance is a provision which a prudent man makes against fortuitous or inevitable contingencies loss or misfortune this is again very important to understand and according to maggie dh insurance has been defined as a plan by which large number of people associate themselves to shoulders of all risk attacks to individuals so through these uh, definitions we can understand that insurance is basically a device which provides a compensation to the effective person and that through a accommodated through a contribution by all the policy holders through a common fund and uh, that will be provided by the insurance company to you according to ds ansel insurance may be defined as a social device providing financial compensation for the effects of misfortune the payment being made from the accumulated contributions of all parties participating in the scheme according to regal and miner insurance is a social device whereby the uncertain risks of individuals may be combined in a group and thus made more certain small periodic contributions to the individuals providing a fund out of which those who suffer losses may be reimbursed thus we can say that on the basis of the above uh, definitions that we have discussed right now insurance uh, can be defined as we can observe the insurance as that insurance is a cooperative device why cooperative because through this every person is coming to the common fund you can say so it is a cooperative device to shift the loss of few to many that we have already discussed with the illustration that by providing a less amount of contribution that is called premium the risk is shifted to the loss to the many persons and when this loss is shifted in return for a fee called the premium when you deposit the premium and we can say that insurance is a method to reduce or eliminate financial loss to group of 
members group members that is those all policy holders of that particular policy so this is the functional definition of the insurance law now coming to the contractual definitions of the insurance what is contractual definition contractual definitions are considered as a contract of indemnity the losses on happening of certain contingency in future it is a contractual relationship to secure against risk some of these contractual definitions are according to justice tindall this is very important definition contractual definition that has been given by justice tindall that is insurance is a contract in which a sum of money is paid to the assured in consideration of insurers incurring the risk of paying a large sum upon a given contingency illustration shows that you have just paid a 600 rupees per month uh, you are to a uh, title to get the compensation of rupees 3 lakh for the mishappening that could happen you in future at that time according to e w peterson insurance is a contract by which one party for a consideration called premium assumes a particular risk of the other party and promises to pay him or his nominee a certain or a certainable sum of amount on a specified contingency on the happening of some event the company will assume the risk it promises you to pay the amount that has been that is ascertainable to you or in the event of death to your nominee and for a meager amount that is a consideration that is called the premium according to maclean insurance is a method of spreading over a large number of persons a possible financial loss too serious to be conveniently borne by an individual so this is the contractual definition which provides that insurance is a contract for a consideration premium and where the parties promises to pay to him or his nominee a certain or a certain sum of amount you know, on a specified contingency there is very landmark judgment that is your lucena versus crawford lawrence justice observed in that case that insurance is a contract he is calling it as a contract by which one party in consideration of a price called the premium paid to him adequate to the risk becomes security to the other that he shall not suffer loss damage or prejudice by the happening of the perils specified to certain things which may be exposed to him that he may come in exposure in future to those perils you are secured from that so it is a kind of contract between the insurance company and the insured person that for a consideration of a price for a meager consideration that is called your premium you are adequately uh, protected from the risk or the perils which you may expose in the future also another important case is in department of trade and industry versus stent christopher motorists association limited it was held that there has to be a positive commitment on the part of the insurer to pay a sum of money or money's worth on the happening of an event basically this was a direction given to the insurance company that in the event of miss happening or any event you can say then you sh should be positively committed to bear that particular loss another case is in medical defense union limited versus department of the trade it was held that where the promise is only to give an earnest consideration to the claim for indemnity or the insurer undertakes to pay at his discretion there would not be a contract of insurance so this is very important to understand that what is insurance and what is not insurance you can say what is insurance policy and what cannot be defined as insurance policy in the words of justice channel insurance is a contract whereby one person called the insurer that is your company undertakes 
in return for the agreed insurer undertakes in return for the agreed consideration called premium to pay to another person called insured a sum of money or its equivalent on specified event so this is very important to understand about the contractual definition that insurance is a contract whereby the insurer undertakes the bear or undertakes the risk of the insured person after getting a amount that is called the premium amount thus on the basis of above stated contractual definitions of insurance we can highlight certain features that is insurance is a contract secondly whereby certain sum that is called premium is charged in consideration from the insured that is the policy holders by the insurer and he assumes the risk of insured that on the happening of a specified event he shall pay a specified or ascertainable amount this is how we can conclude the contractual definition that a contract through which the insurer assumes the risk of the insured whereby a premium is charged for that particular for bearing the risk and that insurer assures the insured that on the happening of certain events he will pay a specified or ascertainable amount in other words we can say that insurance may be defined as a contract by which one party that is the insurance company for a consideration that is called the premium amount assumes a particular risk of the other party that is the insurance policy holder and the company promises to pay to the other party or his beneficiary a certain or ascertainable sum of amount on the happening of specific contingency against which the insurance is asked for so i think it is now more much clear to all of us through the contractual or the specific definitions that what is insurance law now on the basis of the previous discussions that what is the meaning of insurance through the contractual of uh, or the specific definitions let us discuss about the nature of insurance ki what is the nature of insurance nature of insurance can be determined as number 1 sharing of risk and its transfer the insurance protects the person from a variety of risks which might be fall on him or his family on the happening of a specified event the event must involve some kind of financial loss to the insured or at least exposed to some adverse event called the risk so it is important to understand about the sharing of risk and this transfer that insurance protects the person from a variety of risks and that what type of risks when he can be fall on the happening of a specified event and that event must involve some financial loss or at least he should be exposed to some adverse event and that financial loss adverse event is known as risk the fundamental nature of the insurance is to reimburse the insured by shifting the financial losses suffered by him due to death or disability damage deterioration destruction or loss of property over plaintiffs that are exposed to similar risk you can see second type of nature of the insurance is cooperative mechanism obviously through the cooperation insurance can exist insurance is a social mechanism whereby people facing common risks come together through a system of equitable contribution they makes it agree that they will contribute this amount to a common fund in other words insurance is a device to transfer certain risks or measurable economical loss suffered by the contributors that would otherwise be borne by the contributor alone so it is very definite the nature of the insurance is that the loss is ascertainable or it can be measurable in economics right and it will be uh, the premium will be calculated in a common fund and the loss will be 
contributed it will be borne by all the policy holders. Third nature of the insurance is about the valuation of risk. The risk is evaluated only then the person is insured. After charging the amount of share called consideration or the premium you can say. So, this is very important that it is your you do not get any right to of entitlement to get the policy. The company first of all access you, it access it evaluates you that whether it can issue the policy such kind of policy to you or not you can say. And this risk can be evaluated by various methods. If more loss is expected, higher premium may be charged or maybe you are you will be denied the policy if you are not fitting into that particular policy. The probability theory is used to use to evaluate the risk or we can say that probability of loss is calculated before or at the time of insurance. So, this is the proposal form that the company usually asks you to fill that and on the basis of that proposal form the company evaluates you and then it issues you a insurance policy. Fourth nature of the insurance is about the payment made at certain contingency. In the contract of life insurance, the payment is certain because the contingency that is the death will certainly take place. In case he, serve, he survives the terms of policy, he will be paid as per the terms of the insurance policy. In other kinds of insurance contracts, basically general insurance contracts such as marine, fire, theft, property etc., the contingency may or may not occur. So, in that situation, the payment is not certain due to the uncertainty of the event. The company charges you annually, biannually and uh, it renews your policy or it re may not renew your policy. Therefore, if the contingency occurs, the payment is released, otherwise no amount is paid to the insured. Your deposit that is your premium given for that particular year is lapses, right? And you have to renew your policy with another set of premium amount because contingency did not happen. Fifth nature of the insurance is amount of payment. In Beresford versus Royal Insurance 1938, it was held that a contract of insurance as assurance is made by the insurer that a sum of money will be paid to the person insured on the occurrence of a certain or ascertainable contingency. In other words, the insured gets the assurance that his loss would be made good by payment of money. So, this is very important that this is a contract of insurance where the insurer assures the insured that on the happening of certain ascertainable contingency, he will definitely made the good by, of, by way of payment of money at the end. In contract of life insurance, the insurer promises the insured to pay a certain fix of amount on the happening of a certain event as the purpose of a life insurance policy is not to make good the financial loss suffered by the insured. It is not important for the dependents in the life insurance contract to prove the occurrence or amount of loss that has been definite that you are insured for this particular uh, amount in the event of happening of the death. The insurer promises to pay a fixed sum on the happening of a contingency that is the death. Whereas in the general business, in the general insurance policies or the property insurances, the occurrence of event and the amount of loss suffered has to be proved by the insured and the insurer makes good to his losses. This is very uh, you know a big difference between the life insurance policy and the general insurance policy in the event of life insurance when the event happens that is the contingency happen that is the death 
in that situation the nominee or other person's legal hires will get the definite amount as assured by the insurance company whereas in the general insurance policies definitely you will be insured for a fixed premium but you will not get what has been promised the loss will be accessed and then you have to prove that this loss has been occurred to me and if the company is satisfied it will make good loss of uh, or to that particular losses to you sixth nature of the insurance is large number of persons insured this is very important uh, significant you can say feature of an insurance company although a small number of persons may be insured the cost of insurance to each such member will be higher obviously if a few 50 persons are contributing the premium amount will be higher and if 5 lakh people are contributing the premium amount will be lesser it may become unmarketable between common mass if the premium is high obviously you will not take the policy therefore it is essential to ensure large number of persons to make the insurance cheaper that will suit you the pockets of all in other words lesser the cost of insurance lower would be the premium and for that it is very necessary that a mass should be insured in that particular policy and how it will be done when it will be popular among the common masses and when it will be popular when it will give you maximum benefit for a very less amount that is called the premium seventh nature of the insurance is about the establishment of a welfare state how as the insurance serves the sociological purpose it also helps indirectly the nation to accelerate on the path of progress the premiums are collected from the policy holders by the insurance companies and that amount is utilized in organized sectors also the companies fund the big industrial houses directly or by underwriting securities and indirectly mobilizing their capital formation so your amount that has been calculated through the premium of a policy that is collected by the companies and it is funded to the big industrial houses or to some other sectors various sectors such as your pharma sector your metal sectors etc in other words we can say that insurance helps in commercial prosperity mobilizes the resources it accelerates and stabilizes and grows and helps in the establishment of a welfare state obviously if our industry will be prosperous then it will help in the establishment of a welfare state and how it is happening insurance companies are investing that amount it is providing that it is funding the industrial houses for some particular interests etc and lastly the nature of the insurance that is the eighth nature of the insurance is insurance is not a charity or gambling the question arises so whether this is a charity if so many people are contributing or whether it is a gambling because insurance amount is given in the event of happening or non happening of certain thing in general insurance so let us see the first question that comes handy or to one's mind is that if the time of the death is non speculative we cannot guess when the death will occur isn't the life insurance policy is a gambling the justifies answer that comes to our mind is that nothing is more uncertain than life and life insurance policy offers the sure method of changing the uncertainty into certainty in the same way uncertainty of loss is always looming on the property owners and the industries so it is not a gambling basically why because the death will occur definitely so it is not a gambling and the insurance company offers you a sure method of providing the money for that so we can say that insurance is just opposite to the gambling in the gambling a person exposes himself to the risk the risk of losing whereas in the insurance the insured is always opposed to risk 
you have nothing to lose when you pay the premium amount you are assured that this much amount will be paid to you so there is no uncertainty the second query is about the charity that it may draw closer whether the insurance is a charity or not the answer is again no insurance is not the charity as it is given without consideration whereas in insurance consideration is given in the form a contribution called the premium charity it may be for no consideration but in insurance you have to give the consideration that is called the premium amount insurance is a kind of business as in the consideration of premium it guarantees the payment of financial loss so we cannot say that it is a charity charity is that when i give some amount to you and i'm not expecting anything in return but here if i'm paying the premium i'm getting the guarantee from you that i am assured for that particular that so if i get some financial loss or some any kind of mishappening i will be paid for that thinking from the point of view of a family all lives possess an economic value which may at any time be snatched out by the cruel hands of death in the absence of a life insurance the bread earner is supposed to save the money which could be done in a period of time only but death may occur at any time and the family remains unprotected so in that particular event the life insurance policy is required to protect against losses in death similarly when a in the general insurance when a property owner or an industrialist insures the lives of workmen machinery or buildings etc he is relieved of his anxiety or worry and can put his best efforts in his work so this is the nature of insurance that why the insurance policy is required just to protect against the losses or the mishappenings and you can put your working at at a worryless atmosphere so this is something about the nature of the insurance now let us discuss what are the functions of insurance functions of insurance can be classified into three parts first primary functions secondly secondary functions and then other functions let us discuss it one by one what are the primary functions of insurance the very first one is it provides protection with the previous discussion we know that it provides a protection to us the elementary purpose of insurance is to provide protection against future risks accidents and uncertainty the time and amount of loss are uncertain and at the occurrence of any contingency the person will suffer loss in absence of insurance we can say that insurance in real sense is a protection cover against economic loss by apportioning the risk with others second function of the insurance is that it ensures certainty insurance is a device which helps change uncertainty into certainty how the basic function of insurance is to shift the loss suffered by a contributor of premium to common funds on the shoulders of willing capable and consenting professional or professionals or in other words we can say that specific loss faced by a person is positively assumed by another so there is a certainty uncertainty is converted into certainty that if you assume some kind of loss definitely you will be paid by the insurance company which will be uh, contributed by the other members of the policy holders third function of the insurance is to evaluate risk in our day to day life we anticipate various kinds of unforeseen risks and therefore the loss arising from such risks are unpredictable insurance fixes the likely volume of risk by accessing diverse factors that give rise to risk insurance is a guard 
against pecuniary loss and a device to share the loss. The type of risk is the base for ascertaining the premium rate. So, it is very uh, important function of the insurance to evaluate the risk before fixing the policy amount before issuing the policy to you. Fundamental risk affect the entire economy or large numbers of people or groups within the economy. Example of fundamental risks are higher inflation, unemployment, war and natural disasters such as earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes and floods etc. Particular risks are risks that affect only individuals and not to the entire community. Example of particular risks are bulgari, theft, auto accident, dwelling fires etc. With particular risks, only individual experience losses and the rest of the community are left unaffected. So, this is the way of calculating the risk whether it is a fundamental risk or whether it is a particular risk that is sustained to be that is to be sustained to the insured. The distinction between a particular and a fundamental risk is important since government assistance may be necessary in order to ensure fundamental risks such as earthquakes and hurricanes etc because a large amount will be needed by the insurance companies for that. So, in collaboration with government they issue such kind of policies. Social insurance, government insurance programs and government guarantees and subsidies are used to meet certain fundamental risks in our country. For example, the risk of unemployment is generally not insurable by private insurance companies, but can be insured publicly by federal or state agencies such as we got the unemployment some amount for that you can see. In addition, flood insurance is only available through or subsidized by the federal government. So, this is difference between fundamental or the particular risk. Fourth functioning of the insurance is it is a collective risk sharing. Insurance is a device to share the financial loss. It is a medium to share loss of few among many. The risk of loss cannot be averted, but loss occurred can be distributed among the aggregate persons who contribute to the common fund. So, it is a collective risk sharing among the members. When anybody is exposed to loss, such loss is made good out of the common fund. So, that is why we say that insurance function is that it is a collective risk sharing. In 1921, elaborating more, Frank Knight summarized the difference between risk and uncertainty. Thus, that uncertainty must be taken in a sense radically distinct from the familiar notion of risk from which it has never been properly separated. The essential fact is that risk means in some cases a quantity susceptible of measurement, while at other times it is something distinctly not of this character. And there are far reaching and crucial differences in the bearings of the phenomena depending on which of the two is really present and operating. It will appear that variable uncertainty or risk proper as we shall use the term is far different from an unmarable one that is not in effect an uncertainty at all. So, this is very important which has been summarized by the Frank Knight in the year 1921. So, this is about the some of the primary functions of the insurance. Now, what are the secondary functions of the insurance? The very first secondary insurance is to prevent the loss. How? Insurance warns 
individuals and businessmen is to embrace appropriate device to prevent unfortunate aftermaths of risk by observing safety instructions by asking them to install automatic sparkler or alarm systems or various guarding machines fencing etc the basic purpose behind it is to prevent the losses so this is very important for us that insurance company guides us it warns us well in advance that we will issue you this policy or we have issued you this policy you have to observe these certain kind of guidelines through this we can prevent the loss also for another secondary function of the insurance is that it provides capital i told you previously also that in order to ensure that insurance is providing maximum benefits at the cheapest rates a large number of persons are insured at similar risk factor it indirectly helps the nation to accelerate its growth and resources that amount will be utilized there the premium so collected from the policy holders are utilized by insurance organized by the insurance company in organized sectors or it is funded to big industrial houses which in returns mobilizes capital formation of the insurer so this is very important aspect that whatever amount you are giving to the insurance company they will collect it from you and they will transfer it to some big insurance by big industrialist houses and that amount will be utilized by those sectors and which in return mobilizes their capital and formation of the insurer another important secondary function of the insurance is that it improves efficiency how it improves the efficiency see big as well as the small industrial houses or other establishments feel relaxed and carefree by ensuring the lives of their workmen their machinery their buildings their raw materials etc it also eliminates the worries obviously if the worry is eliminated efficiency will be increased it eliminates the worries and miseries of individuals and societal losses and in return what it will do it will improves accelerates and stabilizes the growths the uh, industrialist or the owner will work in a will work in a worryless environment he is free from the miseries or the worries about the life of his workmen about his industry establishment about the building about the raw materials etc another secondary function of the insurance is that it ensures welfare of society at large insurer helps in community prosperity mobilizes the resources accelerates and stabilizes growth and hence ensures the welfare of society so these are the primary functions and secondary functions of the insurance there are certain other functions of the insurance law which can be put under the third heading that is the other functions the very other function is savings and investment tool obviously through paying the premium you are saving also insurance restricts unnecessary expenses of a person and therefore considered as best option of savings and investment obviously if there is a, a worry in your mind that you have to pay the premium in the succeeding month you will expend less especially in the unnecessary uh, events you can say you will not pay that money at that time because you have to pay the premium of the policy so it is a best option of savings and investment also a person takes insurance as a good investment option to take the benefit of income tax exempt we know that in insurance uh, by taking a uh, insurance policy we are exempted from the paying some sort of income income tax also another other functioning of the insurance is that it is a medium of earning foreign exchange being an international business any country can earn foreign exchange 
by which way of issuing marine insurance policies and a different other ways right why i say marine insurance because when it comes to international business uh, through sea routes are very famous cargo routes and vessel routes these are things are very famous in this policy so by entering into that by issuing those such policies to the foreign nationals you are earning the foreign exchange also other function of the insurance is that it is a risk free trade insurance provides indemnity or reimbursement in the event of unanticipated loss or disaster insurance boosts exports insurance making foreign trade risk free with the help of different type of policies under marine insurance cover so coming to the nature of the insurance it is very much clear that insurance provides us indemnity in the event of any unanticipated loss for a amount which has been given by us that is called the premium so this is uh, this in return will help in the risk free trade and it will make the foreign trade risk free with the help of different type of policies which are issued by different companies in the different nations so if we come to the conclusion of this natures and the meaning of the insurance we can very fairly conclude that what is insurance first of all we have uh, discussed about the insurance that insurance is a cooperative device to shift the loss of few to many peoples in return of a fee called premium and it is a method to reduce or eliminate financial loss to group members so this is very important uh, conclusion of the this particular insurance that what is the meaning of insurance a cooperative device that will shift the loss of few within the many peoples many peoples means who are the policy holders of that particular policy and how that will be loss will be shifted when you will pay a fee that is called the premium every member is paying the premium amount in that policy all are in the same box you can say and through this method the risk is reduced or eliminated the financial loss that you will sustain that will be shifted that will be borne by all the group members of the policy that is why we can say that it is a cooperative device and then we discussed that what is the nature of insurance fundamental nature of insurance is to reimburse the insured by shifting the financial losses suffered by him due to that or disability damage deterioration destruction or loss of property over plenties that are exposed to similar risks right so this is the fundamental nature of the insurance that your loss will be shifted to other persons to other policy holders of the similar nature and the any loss that is sustained to you that is your general insurance by way of damage or destruction etc or any loss that is suffered by your loved ones that is in the event of your death in that situation when all persons are exposed to such similar risks then this is the nature of insurance that person the insured a person will be reimbursed by shifting the financial loss to the other persons then we have discussed about the functions of insurance that there are three type of second functions of insurance that is primary functions secondary functions and other functions we can say that insurance in real sense is a protection cover against economic loss by apportioning the risk with others it is essential to ensure large number of persons 
to make the insurance cheaper suiting all pockets through illustration we have already discussed that if you will take only 50 persons in a policy obviously the premium amount will be more and it will be less popular in the market and it is difficult to bear the loss by the insurance company so it is essential for an insurance company for any policy to say to ensure large number of persons to make the insurance cheaper that suits all the pockets in other words we can say lesser the cost of insurance lower would be the premium the insurance helps in commercial prosperity it mobilizes the resources accelerates and stabilizes growth and hence ensures the welfare of society so this is the concept of welfare state that in order to ensure the welfare of society the insurer companies helps in commercial prosperity the amount that is collected from you by way of premium it is invested to various market houses various business houses and which in turn helps them to mobilize their resources it accelerates their path of working and also it stabilizes growth of those industries and when the business and the industries houses will grow they will stabilize they will work in the worryless environment tension free environment obviously our society will be benefit for that so we can say that this is a concept of insurance law very thank to all of you for providing me this opportunity and to explain about the nature and functions of the insurance law thank you very much Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. We usually know William Shakespeare as the most revered figure in the history of English literature. But we often tend to forget that he has also been one of the most hated figures in literature. And here I am not talking only about those boys and girls who have to memorize uh, long sections from Macbeth or King Lear or Julius Caesar uh, before they can go and sit for their school and, or college exams. But I am also talking about people who are themselves quite famous authors. Tolstoy, for instance, considered the writings of Shakespeare to be, and I quote, crude, immoral, vulgar, and senseless. George Bernard Shaw absolutely loathed Shakespeare, as he did Homer. But perhaps no other criticism about Shakespeare is more damaging than the one which says that Shakespeare is a marvelous storyteller, provided someone has told him the story earlier. Now, this piece of criticism is particularly damaging because it is true. None of Shakespeare's plays contain any original story whatsoever. They are all written using pre-existing materials, pre-existing stories. Now, does that diminish the stature of Shakespeare as a dramatist? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippets. <laughs>